Welcome back to Grumpy Vet Garage. In a previous series of videos, I went over the top three brands of stock location turbos for the Gen 2 B58. In researching these turbos, I was able to determine what performance you could expect with using these turbos, but also what supporting modifications would be needed to optimize engine performance with the turbo upgrade. The data showed to make power above 650 to 700 wheel horsepower, regardless of what turbo upgrade you use, you're going to need a fueling upgrade. The only exception to this rule that I want to highlight is the use of meth injection for extra fueling. So setting aside meth injection, it shows that you're going to need to either upgrade your direct injection system, add port injection, or do both. While this research data did answer a lot of questions, it just generated additional questions from viewers asking what's a better path, direct injection upgrade or adding port injection? First, I want to go over what direct injection and port injection is exactly. Direct injection is a fuel delivery system that places the fuel injector inside the combustion chamber of each cylinder. Port injection is a fuel delivery system that places the injector into the intake port or intake runner for each individual cylinder. Starting with direct injection, the advantages of using this system is numerous. There's a reason why companies like BMW, General Motors, Ford, and even Kia are moving to use direct injection systems in some of their vehicles. Benefits of direct injection start with fuel economy. Direct injection enables increased fuel efficiency by having the ability to provide a more precise air-fuel mixture in the combustion chamber and allowing for more complete combustion. This efficiency goes hand-in-hand -hand with reduced emissions. More complete combustion allows a direct injection engine to run cleaner. Other benefits of direct injection is engine performance. The use of direct injection increases engine power and also throttle responsiveness. This is achieved mainly through the ability to run higher compression ratios and the detonation suppression that comes with injecting fuel directly into the combustion chamber. This has a cooling effect on the cylinder, but also helps with great atomization as fuel is being injected into the cylinder during the compression stroke. Additionally, direct injection has the benefit of excellent cold start performance. Cold starts are the most inefficient operation of an engine. Fuel atomization and control in colder engine temps is very difficult. The injection of fuel directly into the cylinder helps with atomization even at these cold engine temps. Think about the difficulty in starting an older carbureted engine or an engine that is port injected but has large port injectors. How difficult it is to get it start and then how long it takes it to stabilize under cold engine operating temperatures. This problem is solved with direct injection. Along with the advantages, there are disadvantages to running direct injection. Right off the top, cost and complexity. You don't simply move a fuel injector into the combustion chamber. An injector to survive in the harsh environment of being inside the cylinder has to be more robust in every way, and this is expensive. Additionally, high pressure fuel pumps and lines that are used on the Gen 2 B58 operate at 5,000 PSI. Manufacturing something that can generate that kind of pressure, again, is going to cost money. In comparison, your typical port injection turbocharged setup is never going to see pressure above base rail pressure plus boost. Example, if your base fuel pressure is 45 PSI and your engine's running 30 pounds of boost, it's going to raise that fuel pressure up to 75 PSI. That's kind of high, but nowhere near as high as 5,000 PSI. Another disadvantage with direct injection is its efficiency at high RPM. Again, this is a timed, a timed event. Trying to get the correct amount of injection into the cylinder during compression with a direct injector is a bit more problematic and requires a bit more precision than relying on the valve timing of a cylinder that is used with port injection. 
There are direct injection upgrades that do pretty well at high RPM, but in general, a system that is very efficient at low end is typically not efficient at high RPM. The last disadvantage that I want to mention on direct injection is carbon buildup. The fuel injector can suffer from carbon buildup from poor fuel quality, but also because it's located in the combustion chamber. This can be combated by using a pour-in fuel system cleaner that will try to break up the carbon on the tip of the direct injector, but this is really only part of the problem. The bigger issue is buildup of carbon on intake valves. This requires mechanical cleaning because a simple pour-in fuel system cleaner won't work on your intake valves on a direct injection engine because fuel never flows over those intake valves. It's injected into the cylinder directly. This carbon buildup over time will cause poor engine performance, poor throttle response. All the good things that come with direct injection can be hampered by buildup of carbon on the intake valves. In defense of later direct injection engines, the PCV system has come a long way. It's advanced and become more robust to prevent different materials, oil vapors from making it into the intake track. But even with these improvements, carbon buildup on intake valves still persist on even later model direct injection engines. Moving on to the advantages of port injection, first off, intake valve cleaning. With port injection, the fuel naturally flows over the intake valves, preventing carbon buildup on the valves and also in the intake runners. Additionally, periodic use of fuel system cleaners that would also help a direct injector helps the port injector stay clean, but also accelerates that cleaning of the intake track and intake valves. Second advantage is cost. Port injection components are drastically cheaper than any of the direct injection components. And the final advantage that I want to mention for port injection is a appropriately sized fuel injector will excel in delivering fuel at high RPMs. This is where a large injector can really excel. But of course, there's going to be disadvantages to port injection, and they're really twofold. First, cold start performance. Fuel injectors, especially large fuel injectors, have a hard time providing precise control of fuel at uh, low RPMs, but also during cold starts. Cold starts, specifically, there's something called fuel pooling that really occurs with large fuel injectors where atomization doesn't happen properly. Large droplets are created, and these large droplets, when they enter the cylinder, make for incomplete combustion. This incomplete combustion creates hard starts, poor idling, and then also high emissions. And I sort of touched on the second disadvantage, but an appropriately large flowing injector that's going to give you that good top end performance struggles with the low end performance. Um, sometimes you can get a little bit of a stumble or hard transition from off idle to on throttle with a large injector. So that's why there's a reason why OE runs small injectors in older port injection vehicles. They start up easier, not the best, but they do start up easier and they idle well once they're warmed up. And then that transition on the throttle is smooth, but of course they don't flow as much fuel as a large injector, which is really what you want for performance. So I think it's pretty clear that there are advantages and disadvantages to both systems. But what's also clear is they complement each other very well. The advantages of direct injection solve the disadvantages of port injection. And conversely, the advantages of port injection solve the problems with direct injection. Remember, we're talking about the Gen 2 B58 or my A90 Super specifically. We're not talking about replacing direct injection with port injection. We're talking about adding port injection on top of an already reliable direct injection system. Adding port injection just kicks in in those high load conditions. Your idle and cruise is still going to utilize the factory DI system that works flawlessly. I think I can't stress this enough. The flawless operation of the factory DI system is the biggest reason to go with a port injection system. You get all of the benefits of that daily driver type um, idle control and start with keeping your DI system factory.
Any significant fueling modification, whether it's upgrading your DI system or adding port injection, is going to require DME tuning. Tuning platforms like MHD Plus, which I have on my Toyota Supra, allows the mode of reflex plus to be integrated with the DME in controlling port injection. It also integrates with controlling many other things like fuel pumps or external wastegates, but in this particular case, we're going to concentrate on port injection. With this integration, the DME controls metering of the fuel with the DI system and the port injection system. So it knows what fuel it wants in general and what system is providing the fuel for complete combustion. EcuTech also has this integration uh, via CAN bus with a Motive Reflex Plus, but other tuning platforms at this point, I think eventually they're all going to get there, but some of them do not have CAN bus communication or integration of a port injection controller. Use of an external controller, which is typically still going to be the Motive Reflex Plus with these types of tuning platforms, still makes port injection possible. The integration of tuning utilizing MHD Plus makes the addition of port injection the clear choice, in my opinion. Without integration, I understand why the choice might not be as clear as with integration. There are many safeties built into the use of the Motive Reflex Plus uh, to run port injection, even if it's running as a standalone controller. This still makes adding port injection the clear best choice, in my opinion. Ultimately, this is all just a personal choice. If you're not bothered by the disadvantages of running direct injection only, then I have good news for you. Spool Performance, for example, they sell a upgraded high pressure fuel pump and upgraded injectors that are 60% over factory injectors that can generate or support between 800 and 900 horsepower from E50 to E85 fuel. In my research of stock location turbos, the highest horsepower DI only upgraded setup ended up being 659 horsepower on E50. This was using a Pure 900, a Dorch high pressure fuel pump, and then S58 injectors, which are 30% over B58 injectors. While this number is impressive, there are numerous examples of guys running completely stock fuel system. So stock low pressure fuel pump, stock DI pump, just running DI only with upgraded turbo, making between 624 horsepower and 640 horsepower running E30 to E40. So from the evidence I've seen, I wouldn't exactly say um, the evidence is in favor of direct injection upgrades. But again, this is a personal choice. My choice just happens to be port injection. There are numerous 800 plus horsepower setups using port injection, typically utilizing 1050 cc injectors, but also has great idle, great low end throttle response because it still utilizes the factory DI system. That's my perspective, but let me know what you think. Leave a comment on your experience or your opinion on upgrading the direct injection system versus adding port injection on your Gen 2 B58. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to Grumpy Vet Garage, liking this video, sharing this video. To support the channel, we have a Grumpy Vet Garage merch store. Link to the store is in the video description. Additionally, we have affiliate marketing links in the video description. Using those links to make any purchase directly supports the channel. If you want to contact me, you can do so through the comment section of this video or on our Facebook page or Instagram. Links to both of those are in the video description. But as always, thanks for coming and seeing me in my garage. And until next time, have a good one.